welcome to my sewing room. We have a wonderful show for you today with some beautiful, beautiful women's fashions as well as a lot of other things to share. This pillow is absolutely beautiful. As a matter of fact, it's hard to believe the embroidery was done by machine. It was done in the Giga Hoop. And my friend Connie Martin is here today and she brought these wonderful samples. You know what else I love about this little pillow? Do you see these tiny little red dots? Those are French knots. Believe it or not, done by machine, which is, makes it easier and faster. Cut work by machine is absolutely one of my favorite things to look at and to do. And I want you to look at the magnificent dress with the cut work all the way, to, and then some raised cut work. But the cut work goes all the way down the front of this dress. I think this dress looks like it came from one of the most expensive stores of all. We have another beautiful cut work suit which is very, very elegant, and it has the cut work which comes around, coming all the way down the front to cover the buttons and the buttonholes. Very, very tailored and very elegant. Another wonderful jacket, ladies' jacket, it just has fun things. You know, it, it has red and green and yellow and white, so actually it could be worn year-round, but I would really like this for a Christmas jacket. It has the applique, the raised applique motifs, and lots of gold work, making it very pretty and fancy. We have another magnificent wool jacket, which has the most elegant gold work. I'm going to turn the sleeve around a little bit so you can look at not only the front, but also the sleeve, which has magnificent re uh, reverse bobbin work, braid that has been stitched down, couched down, and then wonderful machine embroidery designs on the front. I have to just show you Connie's little grandson suit. This little suit was made for Cameron. And look how it has Cameron in the middle and his birthday done in machine embroidery. How precious. Next, come on over to the technique boards with me and we'll share with you just how some of these wonderful things are made. This is one of the most beautiful suits I've ever seen in my life. It is so elegant. Using the patterns from this series, uh, Connie has made this magnificent suit with the beautiful blue couching and bobbin work using all kinds of different threads simply on the cuffs and on the pockets of this great fitting jacket. Let me show you the other beautifully understated things she has to go under this suit. This wonderful shell, just a simple shell, completely unadorned, and this beautiful skirt, which has one of the most fun hems I've ever seen. There are little jagged points that go around. This wonderful cotton linen blend. Now, how on earth did she make those beautiful pockets and the beautiful uh, cuffs? First of all, you have to stabilize your fabric, and you trace on the right. Here is the correct side of the fabric. Here is the stable, the interfaced underside. So you simply draw something on as a little guideline, and then this is the bobbin work that you, I'm working from the wrong side of the fabric. Let me turn it up, and you can see just how beautiful it is when I turn it up. That, that eventually is, is the right side, although we sew it from the wrong side. Now there are some wonderful threads here that can be used. Uh, all kinds of threads, shiny threads, fat threads, cotton threads, thin threads, bobbin th spool threads, almost anything is fair game to use. And then when you put them all together, this is your result of the fabric you have created. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Connie Martin. Connie is, an educational, is the educational coordinator for Genomi of America. She is also a Martha Pullen Genomi licensed teacher. Connie, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's so great to be here. <laughs> now, I think we were going to show our viewers this this beautiful jacket. What did you want to talk about? Connie? Well, just that on on the uh, zigzag that I've used there, we did reverse bobbin work, and so I wanted to show the viewers reverse bobbin work. All right. Okay. Um, basically, the the one thing that we need to do is make sure that when you put the bobbin in the case or in the bobbin holder as we have, I'm not putting it in the bobbin tension. That's important. But I am going to bring it up through the hole so that it's ready to go, okay? I've marked on the other side of the fabric. I'm very careful not to say the wrong side. <laughs> I had a lady in Indiana when I was doing a seminar who told me there is no wrong side of fabric, I use both sides. 
<laughs> she was a quilter and she uses both sides of the well, fabric. Sure. So I between you and me, it's the wrong side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Connie, I love it. <laughs> I've chosen a decorative stitch and just lower the presser foot. And now that heavier fab or heavier fiber is just sewing. We don't see what's happened until we finish finish it. It's kind of like magic after you finish sewing, it is. isn't it, Connie? <laughs> With a heavy fiber, you might want to um, finish off a stitch. We have a lock-off stitch, and the reason I'm locking it off is that sometimes you run out of thread on the bobbin. And so we want a, um, a reason or a way to get back to that. But here we have, looks like a How row of ribbons or of roses. It That's, is really, really gorgeous. Do you ever experiment with different stitches? I do. I do. Okay, and okay. The, um, the other one I wanted to show you is with silk ribbon. And this is, this is a joy to use. I actually wound this on the bobbin, I mean on the, on the machine. Um, I didn't wind it by hand, but I go through the same procedure of laying it in the bobbin without, without putting it in the tension clip and then bringing it up through the needle hole. So we've got the same procedure going here. And I'm going to choose a different stitch. The one that I did on my jacket is a um, little curved stitch. So we're going to go back to choose number 80. And this is so amazing to me. <laughs> Silk ribbon being sewn out I of know. the bobbin of a sewing machine. <laughs> I know. But you know, when we like things pretty and we want to embellish them, it just makes it very, very simple to do. The reason I wanted to show that um, gold on my jacket is that even a plain old zigzag can be used for reverse bobbin work and um, we just need a wide open stitch. We want to make it as long and as wide as possible so that it has room to actually um, spread out that heavier fiber. And here's my How reverse bobbin. Pretty. Oh my goodness. And that didn't take very long, did it? Not at all. <laughs> That's fast silk ribbon embroidery. <laughs> That's <isn't> right. <laughs> That's right. Connie, show us once again that beautiful, the beautiful blue right there. That is so pretty. Now show us where you did the silk ribbon. The silk ribbon okay. I have right here. Okay, okay. And this is a different fiber. This is actually um, a uh, fiber for our serger and uh, the loopers. Okay. It's a decorative okay. serger thread, and we use that in the uh, the bobbin. But uh, just experiment. Such imagination. Yeah. Oh, Connie, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and now Connie has a garment construction tip for you. The technique that Connie is going to share with you is so gorgeous. I wanted you to look a little bit closer at this couching on the beautiful, beautiful cuff of this suit. And there are two different threads, I believe, that you've correct. used, Connie. Is that correct? Connie, show us how to do that wonderful All technique. Right. I've been couching with um, our miracle, miracle Stitcher foot. I have monofilament on the top and just regular bobbin thread on the bobbin. And with the, um, the needle, it's not that the, the fiber, this plastic canvas cord, is not going into the needle, but it's held close to the needle. And the um, zigzag that I'm using is a fairly shallow zigzag with the feed dogs down. So feed oh dogs goodness. are down because I'm driving, okay? okay. <laughs> All right? So I have to make sure the presser foot is down, but I've got a, a zigzag. I do interface or stabilize the back of the fabric, and that gives it some stability. And I am doing this on the front side or the correct side of the fabric. <laughs> and for quilters who have done a lot of meandering or, or stippling, uh, you know, this is, this is a technique that they'll be very familiar with. How pretty. Isn't that great? And the actual needle did not go into no. this uh, plastic canvas no. thread at all. It's going zigzagging over it with uh, just okay. a tiny well, zigzag. Show us what it looks like. Okay, over. here it is. A, um, um, a little bit bigger design or a little bit bigger area that I've covered and the smaller um, pearl cotton was also couched on with the miracle stitcher foot again with the monofilament on the top just lots of fun. Connie, <laughs> it is fun, and it's ever so elegant. And thank you so much for being oh, with me thank today. thank you. <laughs> and next I have a home decorating project for you.
I adore quick and easy gifts, and especially ones where you can show off your machine embroidery or your hand embroidery. This is one of the sweetest little pin cushion projects that I have ever seen. Now on this one, I have used machine embroidery. I have a couple of little imported doilies. Let me show you real quickly before I show you how to do it. We started out with two of the little doilies like this, you know, with the little uh, hem stitching that is already in the doily and it's already finished, the edge is already completed. Then we did the machine embroidery and in this case it has pink ribbon run through, silk ribbon, and it's run over two rungs, under two rungs. Just gives a really pretty look and four little pretty bows are tied on each corner. Let me just turn it over to show you. It's just absolutely completely simple on the back. Now I want to show you another little trick. This one, let me go back again to the back. This one was stitched together after the weaving was done, I mean, excuse me, well, I'm sorry, after the weaving was done, this one was stitched together. So you only had to weave through one area and that row of stitching holds it together. That makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let me show you how to make one of these. I have to have two of the little doilies like this. Now, if you want to do it the easiest way, you will go ahead, let me get my silk ribbon here. This time I'm using a, a beautiful pale blue. You'll just go ahead and do your weaving and you can go over and under one or over and under two. I'm going to go over and under two here. That will make it go just a little bit faster. And it is actually easier to stitch this without stitching the two of them together. So you see, I run my ribbons run my ribbon through the holes and then after the top piece is already finished then I will put it on the bottom piece and in this case just with white stitching I will stitch the two together leaving enough of an opening just to put my little uh, stuffing in there to make a pin cushion. Now then here I have as you can see I've had white thread on the bottom this is the little bunnies by the bay with the bunnies and the little flowers and the outline stitching also pretty you can actually just stitch the these two together without running any ribbon through them if you would like to and you can also after having stitched both of them together you can then run the ribbon through although it's a lot easier to run the ribbon through just one of these little doilies. Now aren't those two sweet little gifts that you little pin cushions or just little potpourri or whatever you want to put in it but aren't those a, isn't that a sweet way to show off your machine embroidery and of course your hand embroidery too. And next, we have some silk ribbon embroidery for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my dear friend and business colleague Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is one of the world's most renowned needle artists and has taught needlework by hand, I might add, and machine all over the world. She frequently has articles in So Beautiful magazine as well as other international publications. And Beverly, it's just wonderful to have you back again. Martha, it's, you know I just love being with you and uh, being on the program and talking with your viewers. Now Martha, today I would like to just spend a moment, if we may, talking about this blouse which is your new blouse pattern. It's a wonderful pattern. Um, the lace was shaped first and if the viewers wish to give a little more stability to these lovely fox gloves which are in the center, they can put a little bit of fusing on behind using the template as a guide to the size that they need because as you can see the lace has be then been cut back and that I don't know whether I actually did it at the time but I think it is a very good idea to put some there. Um, the fox gloves are a fairly stable flower and interesting to use in, in a blouse and you can see how I've used it just on that central motif and also on the sleeves just that on each side. It often looks quite good if you're doing it on a garment to put two different colors and it makes the central one stand out just a little bit more. Now they're really quite easy to do when you, once you know how. Now you can see we have a completed one here and then you will see that I have taken some stranded cotton and just put these three spikes here like this. They don't really serve any other purpose than to give you a guidance for your shape. 
it does, if you completely cover them, that really doesn't matter. So you can see that I've got two French knots at the top here, just a little bit above those lines. Then I have taken, again, it's a variation of split stitch, but or ribbon stitch, but I want to show you how to do that. And you can see how these have just been dropped down, just putting them at different angles. We have a completed one here. And then you will see the leaves. Again, the same stitch, but using a seven millimeter ribbon this time. And by altering the point in which you pierce the ribbon, we've been able to get different shapes. So here we are. We have these French knots here, and we're just going to quickly do one like this over and back. Put your finger on it and then take it through. Pull it on there like that. And you'll find, ladies, if you've ever had problems with, um, with them waving in the breeze to you, they will never wave anymore. Then we're going, having done those French knots, I'm just going to turn this round upside down. I don't know why, but I find it easier to do these upside down. <laughs> it's funny, but then you know I come from down under. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> so we're going to just lie that flat on the ground. We're going to put the needle in there like that. And then I'm going to take a pin. And if you put that pin like that, hard up against the needle, sorry, my apologies, the other side, mm. then when you pull this through, you will find that that little roll will stay there. And I usually like to leave it there until such time as I come up again once more on this like this and lay that on the ground again. In that way, you're not tempted to pull that, la that roll back because we don't want a point like split stitch. We just want that rolled because foxgloves do have a roll underneath like that. So there we are. We can now put our needle in like that, put our pin behind it like that, and once more, we're going to take that like that. Now, I tend to just pop these along like this um, at various different angles. So the next one will be angled in that way, like that. So this will come down there and then we'll go on. At, at some out here, some like that, some dropping them down. And of course, when you get lower down, then of course we want them to be uh, a little wider in the angle than we do on the top. Now, uh, with these um, these leaves, as I say, just it will depend on whether if you put the needle like that, then when you pull this through, you will see, I'm just going to put my finger there and you can see how it curls that way. If I go to over here, then I will I'm going to have another one, and this one time I'm going to put it in the middle like that and pull it through, just being a thick like that. It just takes a moment. But you can see how that's given me a totally different shape. And then I'm going to put another one out there like this. And this time I'm going to put it, the needle on the other side like that. And you will see when I take it through like that, then I've got a leaf which is going in a totally different direction, a totally different shape. And I usually like to put, depending on how big the clump is, I'll put three, four, five, depending on the size that I need. But it's amazing. just by the way you place your needle in, you get this totally different shape and you can really have fun. You know, silk ribbon embroidery is so much fun, period. And I, I, I think the versatility is so great also. Yes, I love it. What you can do with needle and, <laughs> and silk ribbon is wonderful. <laughs> Beverly, thank you so very much again for being here with us. And next, I have a craft for you.
This is the most fun little project. It is a monthly planner, which was purchased at a local discount store. As you can see, I've got two years here, the, year, the years 2001 and 2002. And it is all decorated just on the outside. What a nice gift. Now look, I can slip it in here. As a matter of fact, I had had one of these in my handbag for about the last 10 years. I just love the kind that had the little plastic cover. Now let me slip it in here. See how nice that is and just a wonderful gift. Okay, quickly, how do you make it? Here's what you buy, the little planner. Then you're going to take your uh, paper-backed fusible web and put it on a piece of fabric. Then I will open this up I will open it up and trace around it to get exactly the size, cut it out. After I, wait, first of all, I've got to iron it on. I'm sorry. I've got to iron this on. And then I will pull off the paper back after I've cut it out. I will put it on my little uh, monthly planner, turn it over, press it down, and then I will embellish it any way I want to and slip it back in that little plastic case. Won't you come along with me to my attic? You know, when I travel to flea markets and antique stores, not only all over this great United States of America, but in all the countries I have the privilege of traveling to, I always look for things that I can bring back and share with you in this attic. This blouse is one of those finds. It's a beautiful Victorian era blouse. And you know, I love pin tucks. So you probably figured that out by now. These beautiful pin tucks on the top, tiny little pin tucks that fill in with this outline of the lace are so very pretty. Then we have so much lace, as you can see, different patterns of lace and little gallooning. And then we have the beautiful uh, Swiss eyelet that has been used all over the front. Now what I wanna do, hang on just one minute. Let me pull this sleeve around. It is so beautiful. There is a crisscross of the French lace, and actually they've used edging up here on the sleeves too. You see, this is a straight edge, and this is a scalloped edge. But look at the sleeve, how beautiful that is. We have that once again, this lady who made this blouse has used edging, as you can see. Here's a straight edge, but this is a scalloped one. And then we have the beautiful Swiss insertion. And down here at the bottom of the sleeve, there is an absolutely beautiful tiny, tiny little band which has little tiny pin tuck after little tiny pin tuck used on it. And then there, of course, is some more edging on the bottom. Okay, let me turn it around real quickly and show you how pretty the back is. The backs were nearly always as pretty as the front, and I always enjoy looking at the backs also. Now I have a letter from Nancy Stroop. I don't have the name of the town where Nancy lives, but I, it's a sweet letter I'd like to read you. Dear Martha, we're members of a small rural Methodist church, and several of us formed a united Methodist women's circle, the Martha Mary Circle. We have grown far beyond what we thought possible every year. And now, because there are five of us that like to quilt, we have formed an offshoot of that group and we call ourselves the Mary Martha Quilters. We make mostly crib-sized quilts that we donate to the Ronald McDonald House to comfort the little ones who are hospitalized. They seem to really be appreciated and we love making them. We have also made what we call Afghans of Love and have given a lot of them away to families whose homes have been burned or who are needy in some way. We feel maybe in some small way we can share our love and compassion and love one another as we are taught. There are some in our circle, although they don't quilt, we have taught them to the tie the quilts with us, and that helps a lot. Nancy, this was such a wonderful letter, and I'm so happy that your group is doing this. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I would certainly like to invite you back next time.